what's up everybody this clip is actually being filmed after this video was completed uh, but I have a very important announcement that I want you 73 owners to know about something that I th I am really excited about and something I think you guys will look forward to as well um, you know for the last couple years I've been raving about 1023 diesel um, especially mostly their tuning uh, but 1023 diesel I recommended them to a lot of you guys for custom tuning and uh, just set up a full-on live uh, interview slash chat with uh, Dusty from 1023 that should be going live next weekend I think um, so to all my 7.3 subscribers look forward to that um, we're gonna be talking live or I'm gonna be talking live with Dusty from 1023 uh, if you guys have any questions you would like me to ask I don't know what the format is going to be entirely but if you have any questions you'd like me to ask him, leave them down below and I'll read them all. And I'll try to get some of them in during the uh, the discussion with him. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. He's one of the biggest names in the 7.3 industry. Uh, when I get to talk with him, kind of face to face. So make sure you don't miss that video next weekend. Um, and let's get into this video. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for tuning in. Today we have a problem to solve, or at least I have a problem to solve, and I'm guessing if any of you guys out there own a Dodge Ram truck, at least a somewhat older one, I'd be willing to bet you guys have the same problem as well. So what you see behind me here is my 2006 Dodge Ram 3500 Cummins truck. Uh, I bought this probably three or four months ago at this point and over that time I've kind of been going through and slowly starting to upgrade all these little things that I've uh, I want to do this truck to turn it into my kind of a dream daily driver um, in terms of an older diesel uh, turn it into a sweet looking truck that functions and looks awesome um, slowly been going through doing all the different modifications uh, just turning it into uh, something a little better when I bought it this thing was stock as can be in a total grandpa truck and we're slowly trying to get it away from that grandpa truck look turn it into something i love uh if you didn't see the last video those sweet looking alpha rex headlights back there uh quad projector headlights uh put those in in the last video and they are pretty freaking cool so if you haven't gone and seen that video go and check it out uh, but that's not where we're addressing today we have a problem inside the truck that needs to get fixed so like I was saying, when I bought this truck, it was about as stock as you can get. Um, there really wasn't any modifications done to this thing at all. And so it was uh, not only looking like a total grandpa truck, but uh, functioning like a total grandpa truck and sounding like a total grandpa truck. Now we've addressed a few things already, put a pretty sweet exhaust system on with an exhaust cutout. That sounds pretty awesome upgraded the looks on the front of the truck a little bit, uh, took off the old plastic hubcaps, got the wheels uh, painted nice and dark black. Um, it's looking a lot better, but there's something in here that needs to change. Uh, the sound system in this truck is absolutely horrible. Now, I did go through and I replaced the OEM head unit with this aftermarket boss system. And I gotta say, I absolutely love this head unit. Um, it functions really, really well. I mean, it is easy to use. This cheap little uh, insert kit that I got turned out way better than I expected. Um, and I, in my opinion, is way better than buying this whole new dash bezel. Um, so I'm super happy with that. It's a lot nicer than the stock radio. Obviously, it's got a touchscreen, Apple CarPlay, kind of bringing it into the 21st century. Now, what's really, really lagging behind is the speakers in this truck. Um, I've driven a fair amount of vehicles now, a 79 F-150, a 93 Ford Bronco, uh, 2000 F-250 two-wheel drive, 7.3 liter power stroke, a 2000 F-250 four-wheel drive, 7.3 liter power stroke. And by no means does any older truck that I've been in have a really good stock sound system. Um, in these older vehicles, that wasn't a priority and you just can't really expect it. But I think I have to say that even though this is the newest and the highest trim model truck I have owned, a 2006 Laramie, this is probably the worst sound system in any vehicle I've ever been in. Uh, these speakers are terrible. And what makes it even worse is this was made in 2005 or 6, which is right near the peak of the economy um, at its highest. 
before the big 08 crash, and they still couldn't afford to put in a good sound system, or at least a decent sound system. Uh, so I need to address that problem real quick. Um, by no means am I some audio snob. Um, I've never had a top-tier sound system, and I don't probably ever plan on having one. But maybe it's just the young person in me. Uh, I enjoy good quality sound. Um, I enjoy my music. When I'm on a road trip, I enjoy uh, a good quality sound system. When I'm just cruising on some back roads, I like listening to some good music and having it sound good. I can't do that in this truck. These speakers are so bad. So we're going to be addressing that problem today. So that brings us back into here to the garage to show you the new speakers that I got to go in the truck. So here we go. We got a brand new set of four JBL speakers, two six by nines and two six and a half rounds. Uh, these will be going in the front doors and the rear doors. Everything I've seen online, this is what they uh, show should fit. Um, and these should make a very, very good difference over the stock sound system. Uh, by, by no means are these like uh, super high quality or high end, I should say, uh, speakers or competition level speakers. I think they were about a hundred bucks a piece um, or a hundred bucks for the set or pairs. So we're looking at around $200 total, which is not that much to get a much, much better sound out of your sound system. Now that I have the proper head unit in uh, that can actually push out a decent amount of power to these speakers, they should sound really, really good. Now, like I said, I'm no audio snob um, and I have no plans on be, uh, putting in a some competition level sound system. I just want speakers that sound really good um, or sound pretty good. So that means I'm definitely not going to be doing a whole separate amplifier, running new wires to all the four doors. Um, that's just not my thing. Um, I enjoy quality music, but I'm not a, I'm not the kind of guy that wants to put in that much work uh, to go to that next level. Um, and from my experience, going from the stock head unit and speakers to an aftermarket head unit and aftermarket speakers is a night and day difference of sound quality. Um, and it for my short time of nine or ten years driving uh i think it's done pretty well um, and it's made me happy so if i'm happy with this level of sound system then i don't feel like uh spending the money to dish out uh or to buy a much higher quality system um, now i'm not saying those aren't probably a lot better than this but for the average person, I think this is the way to go, and you'll be happy you made this decision. Um, so I don't think this install should be all that hard. Uh, these should bolt right into place or screw right into place, pop off the door panels, put these into place. I got the wiring harness adapters, so they should plug right on in. Uh, so this install should go pretty quickly. I'll probably try to film a quick clip of what the sound system sounded like before versus after. It's one of those things that's really, really hard to show on camera through the microphone. Um, and then listening to on your end, depending on whether you're on your phone or your nice set of speakers, it changes things as well. Um, but if I think it turns out well enough, I'll include that so you guys can check it out. I think with that, I'm going to get to work, throw you guys on time lapse, and I will catch you guys for me in a little bit for you guys in a couple seconds. Alright guys, so what you're seeing me do here is actually installing a butyl type product called Killmat. What this does is it helps reduce a lot of the vibrations in the doors or in the metal itself. Um, I had some laying around from an old 7.3 project that I did. If you've been around for a while, you know what I'm talking about. But I figured while I had the doors open, I might as well install this uh, just to make the door sound a little more solid and uh, get rid of some of that vibrational hearing while you're driving.
holy hell guys the speakers are in uh, I don't know what it is with this truck maybe it's just the dodges but I have not had a single project on this truck go to plan or go smoothly now just like the head unit I installed um, if I would have done a little more research on that uh, I probably could have made it go a lot smoother for those that didn't know I installed that head unit on the truck and the standard adapter harness uh, was working really funky uh, as far as power on and off goes and that I learned is because of the canvas system in these trucks um, and so I got a control module for it and it works perfectly plug and play um, so that one kind of my own fault I could have done a little more research on these speakers the fronts are six by nines. The backs are technically five and a quarters, but six and a halfs fit. I think the Infinity Sound System has six and a half in the back, so six and a halfs fit. Um, what I didn't see online is that this is a disclaimer for anybody that is buying uh, speakers for this generation of truck. I don't know if it's for the same for the first uh, 03 to 04, but for the 05 to 07 Dodges. They're 6x9s up front, but Dodge made the cutout for the 6x9s very small. And so not all 6x9s fit. Of course, the JBLs that I got, they had a monster basket in the back with a driver and magnet. And they sat out probably an inch, a solid inch. Uh, not even close to fitting. And so I did some much deeper digging, and of course, other people have run into this problem. And it turns out that only 6x9s with a smaller basket in the back will fit. Now, I think if you go into Crutchfield, they do have the listings correct. Amazon will not. It'll just say a 6x9 is a 6x9, and it fits. So if you have any question on whether your 6x9 will fit, I would check Crutchfield first. Um... I think from what I've seen, they seem to be pretty accurate on what will fit and what won't fit. Um, so I was faced with the dilemma of do I return the speakers I got or do I try to make them fit? Um, and so I went up, I got some 6x9 spacers, which are these, and uh, they fit pretty darn good. Uh, the speakers bolted into place just as it should. But, of course, I knew this was going to be a risk. Spacing it an inch out, then the door panels wouldn't go on. So, we're back to square one. Um, people out there have said the two, kind of the two real options are if, other than getting 6x9s that are a little smaller and fit, um, you can either trim up your door panel a little bit to get it to fit in, or you can get a 6x9 to 6 and a half adapter and put the 6 and a halfs up front as well. I really didn't want to cut up the door panel, but I also really didn't want to put six and a halfs up front. Uh, six and a halfs usually give you a bit of a cleaner tone, uh, but because they're a smaller woofer, they have less bass to them. Um, because I was going six and a halfs in the back, I wanted something with a little bit of bass to it, and so I wanted the six and a half or six by nines up front. Um, I went back and forth on going to the store and buying a different set of six by nines and hoping they worked. Um, and what I ended up doing was I ended up just trimming a little bit and kind of folding the sheet metal back a little bit on the door. Um, it wasn't a lot, but it is kind of one of those things that's a pain. So I'm going to say, if you guys don't want to do any trimming on your door, either go with six and a half or check Crutchfield and see if your six by nine is listed as fitting. I can't guarantee they're hundred percent correct, but Crutchfield is a pretty reliable source for the most part. So that's my disclaimer for all you Dodge guys out there working on the front doors. I even think this goes up multiple gen or uh, more years, even into the fourth gens, uh, but I can't guarantee that for sure, so I'm not sure. Um, as far as the back speakers go, I was like, all right, sweet. Front speakers are done. That took two days longer than it should have. Um, back speakers should bolt right in. Perfect. I got to the back speakers, six and a half fit in the hole perfectly, but apparently... Dodge uses a three bolt pattern on their speakers. Okay, not a huge deal. The speaker I got comes with a universal adapter with tons of different holes to get them lined up. 
not a single one of those holes lined up with all three, or not a single one of those orientations lined up with all three. So the universal adapters I had to end up modifying to then get the speakers in. That wasn't nearly as big of a deal as the front of the truck. That went a lot, a lot quicker once I figured it out. Um, I mean, we're talking a matter of an hour tops. Um, so if you're looking for a six and a half rear speaker, I I don't know if there's a standard. Um, it looked like I would expect the standard to be three holes equally spaced. I don't know if you guys can tell, but these two holes are close together uh, compared to that. They are not equally spaced, and that's what was throwing off the universal adapters. So whatever Dodge decided when they were building this truck, they are like, you know what? Let's make these speaker holes a little bit too small for most 6x9s, and let's make the holes on the back door not universal. All right, so like I said, the speakers are all in the truck and sounding phenomenal, so much better than the stock. I'm gonna be done rambling for now, but I wanted to get that out there for you guys in case anybody out there is doing this on their truck just so they know, so they can avoid the headache that I ran into. Um, had I known this ahead of time, it would have been super easy, had all these in in one night. Because of all this, this kind of the thing when you're dealing with a new truck for the first time, I've never worked on these. Uh, this generation of Dodges are Dodges for the most part. It's a learning experience. Um, if I were to do it all again, I could have it all in in a night. So hopefully uh, my trial and error saves you a fair amount of time and money. Um, it's one of the perks of this channel. You guys can learn through my mistakes. So uh, I did a before clip of the audio. Um, I'm going to go in there and show you guys an after clip. And I'm going to say again that... I understand it is extremely hard to get a good representation of audio through a camera microphone, even though I have a pretty good quality camera microphone, through my camera microphone, through your speakers, it's usually pretty hard to tell. So I'm not going to do a big long test. I'm not going to turn it up really loud to show you guys uh, just how loud it can be. Um, there's a lot of crappy videos out there, people blasting their sound system so you guys can hear it. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I'm going to go show you guys, see if you can notice a difference. And I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. I don't know where I left off, but I think I was saying something that we're going to go into the truck and test it out and wrap up this video. All right, guys, let's give this thing a try. I figured I'd show you guys this first. It is much too hot to be working out in the driveway, especially when things aren't going to plan. The 90, mid 90s is too hot for this kind of crap. Uh, all right. Let's set you guys up, see if we can get any decent audio. Turn the AC back on, it's way too hot in here. I am sweating my socks off. <sighs> all right, so I don't know if those audio clips were any good at all. If, while I'm editing, uh, if you guys can't tell, or if I can't tell the difference at all, I'm just gonna cut them out. Uh, but take my word for it, these things sound much, much better. Uh, as far as like mid tones and high cone tones go, the stock ones weren't terrible, but they had absolutely no bottom end to them, and so these ones actually do, um, and it makes the sound a lot better. Uh, by no means, again, is it a competition sound system, that's not what I was going for. Hopefully at some point in the not too distant future, I'll be putting my 10 inch sub in the back. Um, I've seen some boxes that go underneath the seat um, that I like, but uh, still haven't quite decided what I want yet. 
Uh, so that'll give it the final touches of the sound system. It'll be done, sounding good, and I'll be happy. Uh, but right now, uh, it sounds way, way better than the factory sound systems. Um, if you're on the fence on whether you should put new speakers in or not, I mean, even if you don't go super high-end speakers, I'd be willing to bet that they will be better than your stock ones. Um, one big thing is your head unit makes a big difference on how your speakers sound. Stock head units can't put out much power to each speaker. Aftermarket head units can put out a lot more, many times more usually. Um, so if you're going to put new speakers in, you might as well put in a new head unit. Um, if you don't, it'll probably still be a little better. You just won't quite be maximizing them. Uh, either one head unit or speakers if you just do one of them so i think that is going to be it for this video um a complex job turned into a headache so hopefully my headache saves all you dodge owners out there a little bit of time i know this wasn't some huge groundbreaking video but this is kind of the ins and outs of what goes into a building truck uh, a lot of people that joined my channel saw my last 7.3 when it is mostly complete uh, they all loved it they said man i wish i could have a truck like that someday this is what goes into it. Uh, the ins and outs, the, the nightly grinds after work, uh, putting in the hours, the tedious things, all these little things slowly add up into turning a vehicle into a pretty sweet rig. We haven't even really touched under the hood yet. Um, I do fully plan on doing that at some point after, most likely after I put a built trans in this thing. I trust this trans a lot less than I trust my stock Ford trans. Um, but that is all coming down the road right now. I'm kind of focusing on, focusing on more cosmetic stuff. This is a really good running truck. Uh, not a lot wrong with it. Basically nothing wrong with it that I can see or that I know of. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to make this truck kind of reverse in orders of what I did with the last channel. Um, and trying to make the truck look really good uh, before I get into the big performance stuff. So this is going to be it for the video. Um, if you're curious in any of the stuff I used, I'll link it down below, including that kill mat I used. Um, I'll link both sets of speakers that I used, even though I probably don't recommend the 6x9s just because of the fitment issues. They sound phenomenal, but fitment issues, they take a little bit extra work, but I'll link them anyways. Um, as always, I try to link everything I can down in the description below. So if you guys are looking for a way to support the channel, that is by far the best way to support the channel is buy stuff through the links down in the description. The channel gets a really small cut back. Um, it allows me to keep doing videos and mods for you guys to watch. So uh, if you're not buying anything, the next best way is to hit that like button. And if you guys are this far in the video, I'd assume you enjoyed it or at least it was useful. Uh, so hit that like button. I greatly appreciate it. As always, any questions or comments, leave them down below. I read every single comment that comes onto this channel. I'll catch you guys on the next video.